Hey y'all, and welcome back to my garden. Rude. I didn't really think that I could honestly call this a full garden tour because frankly there's just not a whole lot to look at right now. However, I did want to take a look around. We have a lot of new things coming up, a lot of seeds in the ground that haven't germinated yet. And over the next 24 to 48 hours, we're gonna be doing a lot of work, um, weeding the last beds that really need to be reset, kind of pulling out a few of the last summer things and really planting the rest of the garden beds with frost hardy things, lots of greens and peas and just brassicas, all of that. So let's go take a look. I'll tell you what's going on and I'll tell you what we are about to do. So first I should show you that we've let the in-ground garden just go completely to weed. I have been harvesting a little bit of glass gem corn, which I have a little clip that I shot the other day. I'll plug in right here. They're puny and completely pest-ridden, but I grew the most beautiful corn in the whole world. Look at that. This was my first year to ever grow corn. Um, I really didn't know what I was doing. As you can see, I planted it in a row instead of in blocks. And I've learned a lot already. Another thing is this whole space kind of went to weeds and we just quit fooling with it. And I really wish that I had been a little more attentive to the pests over here because the corn was still doing pretty well. But in my neglect of this whole area, the pests kind of got a leg up. The corn that I did harvest was pretty gnarly. I'm going to go ahead and dry it and use it uh, decoratively. This is glass gem corn and you can eat it. However, I don't know that anyone would want Want to eat the corn that I grew because it was pretty pest ridden but it was beautiful. I've got a couple of okra plants here that I'm still harvesting a lot from. Only two of the ones I planted in the ground grew and you can see there's a lot of okra on this. I haven't harvested in a couple of days. The sunflowers are all hanging their heads. I've already saved a lot of sunflower seeds so I have not done anything to protect these. The birds can get to them and have been you can see right here, there's a little bit of the seeds missing from the birds. All of these sunflowers are just going to go to our chickens. Down in my basement hanging um, and they're completely dry. I've got, I mean, probably 2,000 sunflower seeds from the first sunflowers that I grew this year. So I don't really need these. I've got plenty to plant what I want to plant next year and have some to give away. So once we get our chickens moved over in the new coop right here next to the garden, I will probably just start pulling off one of these heads every day or so and throwing it over there for them as a little treat. Some of the beds are not replanted yet. Some of them are like halfway there. Some of them are still very weedy. <laughs> I didn't see you down here. <laughs> Just watching you talk to you yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, you brought me a smoothie, you sweet man. Also, I wasn't talking to myself. I was talking to my friends. <laughs> oh, no, I was talking about after you put the camera down or walking down here, <laughs> you were doing this thing with your hands. I'm like, just practicing for the next part. <laughs> Today is August 31st. That means we are really sliding in to fallish weather. It's still definitely summer and it's still definitely very warm, but our highs for the next 10 days are in the mid 80s, low 80s, which is actually very cool for Arkansas this time of year. And our lows are in the 60s and low 70s, which is so nice to wake up to. At this point, I've got 57 days until my estimated first frost, which means I have now passed the window of sowing cucumbers, squash, beans, all of those things that are really kind of wrapping up. And if I were to sow them now, I wouldn't really get very much harvest before it got too cold for them to grow. But I still have a lot of space in my garden beds to sow. I have started more beans, more squash, more cucumbers. My squash didn't do very well and I don't think many of my cucumbers did either. My goats got into my garden and they knocked out a lot of stuff and as I've replanted it, it just hasn't really taken. So this weekend, we're gonna be doing a lot of work in the garden. Everything that I'm going to be sowing from this point on are all frost hardy plants. Things like peas and brassicas, green leafy things. And I'm actually going to be putting a lot of that stuff in. Okay, so we still have peppers producing and weeds growing like crazy in this area. Some of these I've let get red. These are jalapenos. 
and I'm going to smoke these and uh, dry them to make um, chipotle seasoning because a chipotle pepper is just a red ripe uh, smoked jalapeno. Here's the second planting of cucamelons um, coming up this trellis. I noticed a little bit of drying leaves on these, so hopefully they don't get blighty. This whole long row here is pretty much entirely replanted. I've got this um, tall trellis, which is just a piece of six foot fencing on T-posts. And I've already put in a lot of beans. I planted those a couple of weeks ago. And so what we've got coming up is kind of a mix of things like on these long rows, because I didn't have enough of the same kind to just plant rows and rows of it. Plus I like to try different varieties and I've just recorded it all in notes. So I don't have them marked, but I can tell you the kinds of things that I have planted I just don't know off the top of my head what is where at this point because they're all just little sprouts on that side I've got some radishes which I do remember that those are the sparkler white tip radishes here are some peas coming up you can see on the other side here a couple of young zinnia plants here are a few more I actually sowed those a little while ago and I'm just going to let them go until the frost kills them because it's good to have things for the pollinators these were scarlet runner beans Coming up here, they're all looking very good. Over there are carrots that have not germinated yet. And right here, these three little plants are the only cucumber plants that I think I may get for the fall. The rest of my cucumbers were either eaten by my goats or just shriveled up. I don't know if it's just that we had such a high population of squash bugs as the summer garden was winding down. And I was spending my time in the garden tearing out all of the diseased plants and amending the soil. I wasn't going around picking squash bugs off. And I'm telling you, the population of squash bugs got crazy really fast. And that's just the nature of working organic gardening you have to stay on top of it because when you're not broadcasting chemicals it's really just that you're trying to keep their numbers down and I think that what may have happened is those squash bugs they carry all kinds of disease and they can cause wilts in things like cucumber squashes and melons and a lot of my older plants had died to wilt so I know that the cucumber beetles and squash bugs were doing that a lot of the things I had replanted shriveled up and died. I just don't think I'm going to get very much of a second harvest on those things, which it kind of stinks, but it is what it is. That's honestly just the nature of gardening. Sometimes things do amazing. Sometimes they do so well, you don't know what to do with all of the stuff. And then sometimes you get absolutely nothing and it's okay. There's always next year. Over here, I have some lettuces that haven't come up yet. This trellis is yet to be replanted as are these. Now that's one of the plans that we have for this weekend. Oh, look at this beautiful zinnia amongst the weeds. These are called candy cane zinnias. Aren't those beautiful? The plant's kind of struggling. It was underneath that marigold and it sort of snaked its way out here to get some sun. We're gonna weed these beds really well this weekend. You can see this one bean plant which has come over from this side of the bed and made its way up. This is actually a Zuni gold bean. It's a relatively rare variety. I was given about five seeds from a friend of mine at the beginning of the year. I'm gonna open one of them and see how they are. It's, it, the plant is covered in beans. They haven't started getting their color yet. And they just look like regular little beans. But these are really beautiful when they mature and dry they're kind of like a cream colored bean with these really pretty gold spots on them and i was given just a few seeds and they took a long time to take off and i've got a couple of plants that it, they were listed as a bush bean clearly that's not the case but i planted them over there and they took a long time to take off and i actually didn't even notice that they were growing until i tore the tomato plants out and i saw that they were starting to set flowers so i just left them here and i pulled one bean off that had dried that's how i knew exactly what they were because i thought i thought this was supposed to be a bush maybe it's something different but it's definitely the zuni gold we're not going to be eating these I, I pulled this one to show it to you but the rest of them are going to grow and i'll let them dry so that i can harvest the seeds and have enough maybe next year to actually grow enough to harvest and eat it's looking pretty good it's got a little spotting on the leaves but for the most part it looks healthy it's loaded with beans 
my plan on these rows is to drop the trellises down and we'll have to be careful with that one because those beans are growing on it but we we should be able to drop it down okay and not mess those up we'll just have to come in and cut the zip ties this will be a two or three person job hold the trellises cut the zip ties and then lower them down and retie them because i want to plant my shelling peas on these rows and i had kind of a hard time with deciding which shelling peas to use because many of them were 30 inch varieties and I was kind of thinking well I'll use something that's going to trail really tall and I'll plant them on these rows well having so many that were 24 to 30 inch varieties these these trellises are 24 inches up off the ground so they wouldn't really work for supporting that kind of plant so we're gonna drop the trellises down and plant our peas here where they can actually get some support. There's a hummingbird. I don't have a zoom on this. You see it? Get so many hummingbirds in the garden. I'll just sit out here and they'll, if I've been here for a little while and I'm not talking, they'll start buzzing around my head. It's really cool. Over here, I have some different chards, some kale growing. And my plan is pretty much like when we drop these trellises down and we cover them, we plant all the peas around them, on all the little spaces in between the marigolds and over here I've got quite a lot of space it'll be just a mix of different greens different kales I'm growing a few different varieties of kale different lettuces and spinaches mixed all throughout because I have a lot of different kinds I'd like to try here we've got this big mess of peppers and holy basil the holy basil has reseeded itself everywhere it's all in here as well as some purslane that seeded itself and look at all those little basil sprouts growing the peppers are all turning red and they'll be dried and turned into chili powder the tabasco peppers are still going um, i don't see just a whole lot of new flowers on them so maybe they're starting to wrap up i'm not sure the zinnia patch still beautiful attracting hummingbirds and all sorts of butterflies and i'll just leave it until the frost kills it. A lot of my herbs are doing really well now that the big plants are out of the way. Like this is marjoram, um, and I've got a few places where thyme is just going crazy. These are zinnias that reseeded all here from the plant. All of these are zinnias that seeded themselves. Here's some more peppers. These are Anaheim chilies. And here is a purple pole bean that I planted a couple of weeks ago. Over here we've got some pink eye peas. And on this trellis, these are scarlet runner beans, which I'm hoping will do better as the weather's cooling off. They didn't do so hot here during the summer. It was just too hot for them. On this trellis, I planted some cucumber plants. Um, this, is, this is one of them right here. However, they haven't done super well, and there are noodle beans that volunteered here that reseeded from the plant that was here before. And since the cucumbers aren't coming up and thriving, I've just let the noodle beans grow. So this might end up being a mixed trellis. The okra is absolutely enormous. That's what's back here and what's here. And I've let some of the okra on these go that I'm gonna save the seeds on, but the plants are starting to get weak. They're starting to fall over. The foliage is thinning out and really they're just coming to the end of their life. Here there are some more purple beans, pole beans planted and the rest of this is going to be the taller trailing peas that i have my peppers had such a slow start this year we just had such an overcast spring they never really took off in the greenhouse and a lot of them just were so puny they just didn't make it but the ones that did make it are finally starting to explode the way the pepper plants i've grown in the past have these plants are now a few feet tall they're setting lots of new fruits these are all tiny little peppers here so I'll be letting these go as long as they are healthy and producing, all the way up until the frost. These zinnias are all falling over, but I've just let them grow. More tendril peas here. And here are some dragon tongue bush beans, some calendula. And in the square bed are different lettuces, different kales, and um, cabbages. I, I planted the things that were gonna get kind of big and full in these beds. See, here's more marjoram that's just coming along. If you know any great uses for this outside of culinary uses, call, comment below because I'd really like to know what I could do. I figure I'll dry all of this, but I don't use just a ton of it in cooking. Oh, look here. 
It's a little volunteer tomato coming up in this bed. You'll notice our beds are largely unmulched. That's because the straw mulch from back in the spring has mostly just broken down at this point. And in amending the soil and mixing it all in, there's just no covering, which is not a good thing. So we're actually going to be going and getting more bales of straw this weekend, bringing them in and starting to mulch these beds, especially in the areas where the sprouts are really coming up and getting established. We can mulch around them, which will keep our plants healthy and our soil healthy. These were the areas where I had re planted squashes and zucchinis but my goats came in and they made it out of back fence back there up through the woods and beeline for the garden and since these were the first things right here they ate lots of them they ate the tops off these noodle beans here and I don't really have time to replant squashes or zucchinis and get much of a harvest most all of this is blank slate that will be replanted this weekend. There's some thyme that's really just bushed out since it didn't have any competition for light here. Here are the Kentucky Wonder pole beans that Naraya and I planted when we did a video together planting for fall. That'll show you how fast these things grow. That was just a couple of weeks ago. And here are my pink tip Annie beans that I got the seeds from in a swap. These are really beautiful beans. Little pink, pink and yellow pods. And as far as I know, these seeds aren't available under the name Pink Tip Annie's, but I think there are Pink Tip Pole Beans that you can find. This is some Sweet Alyssum flower that reseeded itself right here. I like to plant Sweet Alyssum as a companion plant to cucumbers. Not because the plant itself really does anything for the cucumbers. However, it's really great for beneficial insects. And having it right under the cucumbers kind of creates an ecosystem where the beneficial insects are really close to the plants where the pests come and set up shop. Now that place where that sweet alyssum is growing was right underneath where my cucamelons were and I've got some more sweet alyssum trying to come up underneath where my original gherkins were this year. A lot of times flowers do reseed themselves and what I like to do, especially in the spring, I'm probably not going to try to move anything now because we're closing in on the year and I've only got 57 days until the frost comes and kills many of these things. A lot of times in the spring or the summer as things pop up and reseed themselves, I've just learned to identify what those things are and I just pick them up and move them somewhere where I want them. That sweet alyssum is entirely growing from seeds that fell from the plants because I tore out everything that was there and that's come back up on its own. Hey little girl, what are you doing? All of this is going to be reweeded, remulched, and replanted with low-lying things that we can put a hoop greenhouse type cover over because I'm going to try to do that to kind of elongate my growing season and turn a couple of these beds into covered beds. The front of these beds is replanted. Some things are just barely starting to come up. We've got a mix of flowers and greens, different kales. There are more peas on this trellis. Of course, I've got peppers finishing out over here. There were cucumbers here, but they were one of the ones that dried up. Here I've got some radishes, some different lettuces just barely coming up. I told you there wasn't just a whole lot to look at. Lots of little sprouts and the promise of things being really beautiful, but right now I think my weeds are probably more impressive than anything I've planted. The things that we will be sowing this week. I'll be putting in all my beets and turnips. I'll be planting another wave of radishes. Of course, I've got radishes growing in a few places and I like to stagger those plantings by about a week or so because they do come to fruition pretty quickly. And although I do like to roast radishes and use them in soups in place of potatoes, which I love, I love radishes and we use a lot of radishes, but I can't use all of them at one time. So I just stagger those so they're ready throughout the season. You also have to keep in mind that as it starts to cool down and the daylight hours get less, things are gonna grow slower than they do in the summer. So whereas it might take something 23 days whenever we have lots of light every day, to come to maturity, it's gonna take a little bit longer whenever there's less light daily. A lot of things like lettuces, your brassicas like broccolis and cauliflowers and cabbages, kale is actually a brassica as well. All of those things, they do fine with a light frost. And so I can plant those now and even if they're coming to maturity when the nights are getting really cool, 
I can just leave them growing and pick them as I need them. Now they're growing might slow down, but they're not going to die in the frost. So that's why I like to grow a lot of those things. Another thing that I'm going to start putting in pretty heavily now is carrots. Carrots are kind of hard to grow here in the south because it's so hot and carrots don't do well in the heat. But our weather has cooled down a lot lately and as we're moving into September, it, we might still have some hot days, but I don't really have to be concerned that we're going to go back into a spell of weeks of 100 degrees. I think we're pretty much past that point, which means I feel pretty confident about putting all of my root vegetables in the ground. One of the things I'm really excited about, and I have planted some of these and I might try to find a few places that I could put a few more in is this walking stick kale. It's also called Jersey cabbage and I got these seeds at Trade Winds Fruit. They didn't even have a picture of it on their site. I had to kind of look for that and I thought that looked like a really neat plant to have. A bee is trying to land on my camera. I'm sure you can hear that. It's very loud. My kids love peas. And as we get ready to plant the kid garden, their garden is going to be largely comprised of peas and radishes because those are things that they will eat, that they enjoy picking. And we'll plant more things that are fun for them in the spring because they all like tomatoes pretty well. I think they'll enjoy growing peppers. But as for the winter, I don't see them getting super excited about a lot of the green things. They may wanna grow some kale in their garden because they like kale chips. But I really wanted to give them the opportunity to grow the things that they like hence why I actually had to go out and buy more pea seeds. With all the seeds I have, I actually didn't have a ton of peas, and with all these long rows in my garden that I wanted to grow something, I'm gonna be growing a lot of peas because they don't kick the bucket at the first frost. They'll fill the space, they'll be beautiful. They're nitrogen fixers, so they actually help your soil, and my family eats them. So it's definitely worth me putting in the extra time and effort to grow a lot of them. Another thing that I totally screwed up on this year was I didn't start my brassicas inside. I told you guys to, and a lot of you sent me messages telling me that you did, but I missed the window completely. And so now I'm going to be direct sowing all of these. Now I showed you where I had some cabbages put in. They have come up, and this weekend as we weed these beds and move everything around and pull out the last bits of remaining summer stuff that need to be pulled, I'm going to be direct sowing my broccoli robs, broccoli, more cabbages, cauliflower, all of these things that really should have been started in the house, I'm going to direct sow because I mean at this point it's that or don't grow them and I would prefer giving it a shot but I should have started these inside. Brassicas really do better germinating around 75 degrees and it certainly is not that here. Overall I'm pretty excited about the fall garden. I think it's awesome to at least try to grow something. You know, your fall garden doesn't have to be as big as your spring garden because a lot of the stuff that you grow through the summer are things that are easy to preserve. And the things that you grow through the fall aren't necessarily things that you're gonna be canning. However, there are a lot of uses for things like kale, for instance. Now, I actually do not love raw kale. I'm not somebody that's like, mmm, kale salad. Like, I just, I, I don't like eating stuff like that. The texture, just not my thing. However, I love sauteed kale with onions and mushrooms and some fried eggs. It's one of my favorite breakfasts. It's great to put in smoothies. We have a juicer. I think somebody asked last time whenever I mentioned doing fresh vegetable juice. I believe it's a Breville juicer. We got it. It was like a refurbished one a couple years ago. It still runs great. It's a centrifugal juicer where you put everything down in. And we can go through some kale with the juicer. That's a great way to get those nutrients if you're not a big salad eater. And kale is great. Uh, roasted in the oven is kale chips. We put it in soup. So my family actually eats a lot of kale even though nobody really likes to eat it raw. If you've never grown kale before because you thought you didn't like it, I really implore you to give it a try because it is very easy to grow. It's very healthy. It grows through cool weather. If you can provide it some sort of cover, you can have kale all winter. Now, now, even here where we get ice and snow occasionally, not a lot, but it's it's routinely under 32 degrees here, especially at night during the winter. And kale will grow all winter here. It might need a little bit of a cover sometimes and it might get a little stunted when it gets crazy cold and icy. But if I plant kale in the fall, I'll still have some of it in the spring. It's definitely a really versatile thing to grow through the fall. So that's what's going on in my garden right now. I'll be sure to bring you guys back as soon as there's more to look at. We're gonna get a lot done this weekend, get a lot of this stuff planted and hopefully in a few weeks some of these little sprouts are going to be really 
pretty to take a look at and we'll have some really interesting veggies coming in here pretty soon. Thank you guys so much for watching, hanging out with me today in my favorite place to be. I bless you. Until next time.